Hey, we're here at Vive 2024, and I've stopped by this wonderful booth because this is probably the most fascinating piece of technology that I've seen on the show floor. Tom Stevens here. Tell us a little bit about what this is. Sure, so this is Jenny. Jenny is a fully interactive robotic emotional support animal, and she'll be used to treat the behavioral and psychological symptoms of dementia, reducing the need for certain medications, including psychotropics, and version 1.0 will monitor those seniors for sundowning syndrome. So with the monitoring that's in this unit, what is that like connected to, uh, the, connected to the internet? How is this done? How is that connection made? Understood. So our first version, we wanted for data security and data privacy purposes, we did not want a fully connected device. So okay. we use Bluetooth to connect to a smartphone app, which is controlled by the caregiver, either a family member or a caregiving professional and they, the data gets pushed to them. Now you were explaining to me off camera that actually uh, the folks that you're targeting this for actually prefer that this is not a real animal. So we, when we did our initial customer studies, we studied with over 700 seniors with dementia. One of our initial concerns was about the ethics of making a realistic robotic animal. Uh, we didn't want to be in a situation where we trick them. Uh, and we learned early on that they actually prefer that it's a robot to a live animal. Uh, pet ownership rates in America uh, peak when we're in our 50s, mm -hmm. and they decline by about 50% per decade after that. We get to the point where we're in our 90s, virtually nobody has pets anymore. And the reason is people don't want the burden of care anymore, either because it's just too much for them or they want a different kind of lifestyle. Yeah. Secondly, the cost. Uh, average American right. spends about $2,500 a year uh, on a dog, and as we age, you know that becomes uh, quite a significant expense. But the third reason, which really surprised us, is that they don't want to grieve for the loss mm. of another animal. And so frequently what happens is their current animal passes away and they simply make the decision to not Not have another one. So this one kind of takes that place without having any of the those other things that go along with pet ownership. Exactly right. So this is an immortal puppy. <laughs> I love it, and and what are the what is the uh, the efficacy of the of this for people with dementia for as a companion? What have it, you found? It's really uh, fundamental around uh, emotional attachment. Okay. So human beings are hardwired to care for babies because if we don't care for them, they may not survive. Right. Uh, uh, there are special areas of our brain uh, with reward systems that when we do care for them, they trigger positive changes in our neurochemistry and where. Well, it's a complex cocktail of neurochemicals. What's thought to be hardest at work is oxytocin. Mm. Oxytocin reduces stress, reduces anxiety. It's fundamental to emotional bond formation. And it also reduces pain. Uh, oxytocin interacts with our internal opioid system, so it makes us feel really good. Um, the best example of this is a mother giving birth to a baby. Uh, a few minutes after the mother gives birth, she gets a massive dose from her pituitary gland uh, of oxytocin, helps her forget about the terrible pain that she just went through and focus all of her attention on that baby. So emotional attachment to the baby, emotional attachment to a puppy uh, are triggering those same neural pathways, helping the person feel better and self-soothe through difficult times. Tell us a little bit about the tech that's in this. So think uh, smartphone that moves. So similar okay. processor, similar memory, similar battery type and battery life. She's designed to last all day on a single charge and then be plug in rechargeable overnight. We'll offer a bed like this as an optional accessory in the future. And if she's simply placed on it, she'll wirelessly recharge. Uh, has nine motors inside her, mm -hmm. all driven to work in coordination with each other to make the, uh, the behaviors right. realistic covered with sensors. She can feel how and where she's being touched. She can tell the difference between a simple touch, a slow caress, vigorous pet, and being held. Um, she responds to voice commands. Uh, we come with a smartphone app that allows people to rename the robot, and then oh. once given the name, they'll only respond to that name. Uh, uh, she can feel herself being moved, so accelerometers and uh, gyros, for those of you who uh, are into that. Um, she will be an FDA medical device, uh, and she's covered with fur. So there's just a lot of technical complexity within the robot. This is I, much more than a smartphone that moves. It, 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 well, I'll tell you, uh, um, 
so such an incredibly diverse number of technical challenges uh, to execute on a product like this. We're, we're just so fortunate that we've had a lot of people that wanted to help us. Uh, for example, we work with Jim Henson's Creature Shop to do all of our artistic design. Wow, uh, okay. And with their help, uh, we believe she is the world's most realistic robotic animal. I love it. I love it. And I love that, you know, you're working towards that RPM because, again, uh, most of us think about RPM, think about pulse oximeter, you think about scales. Uh, this is far beyond that. <laughs> exactly right. So we aim to be the leaders uh, in robotic animals, but we also be, be, uh, uh, aim to be the leaders in mobile contactless monitoring so don't need to be don't need a wearable don't right. need to be physically in touch with a robot the robot is simply being in proximity to the user to the patient will monitor that tom you shared a lot of great information thank you for being on the program where can people go to find out more so tombot.com uh, uh, we are in final alpha pre-production right now we'll be in beta in the april may time frame and then as soon as we have a beta version that's working the way our customers want, we'll ramp up production and begin fulfilling orders. If you visit our website, you'll be prompted to join a wait list. Uh, there's no obligation to, uh, uh, to stay on the wait list. You can cancel at any time. But that will put you on our newsletter so you can keep track of our progress as we're getting closer to first customer shipments. Awesome. Tom, thank you so much for being on our program today. Thank you for having me. This has been Colin Hung with Healthcare IT Today. Thanks for being here.